everyone, this is Veronica Wasek with the 5 minutebookkeepingcom blog where we show you how to minimize bookkeeping and maximize profits. In this video, we're going to go over how to enter daily sales receipts. Now, any company that doesn't invoice customers uh, should probably be recording daily sales receipts. Whether you do e-commerce, you're a restaurant, a medical office, veterinarian, a spa, a salon and lots more other companies that use a separate point of sale system rather than invoicing customers on their QuickBooks. So I'm going to go over how to do daily sales receipts in QuickBooks Online. So here's a great graphic showing the difference between recording daily sales and invoices or sales receipts. So with the daily sales formula, you enter one transaction in QuickBooks for that day's sales. On the other side, for your invoices and sales receipts, you enter many transactions in QBO. So you will enter one invoice or sales receipt for every sale made in QBO. So there's a big difference. And um, actually, if you do invoice customers, you, you must use um, the invoicing or sales receipt method. But as I said, there are businesses who only need the daily sales method. So in order to do the daily sales method in QBO, first you have to set up some accounts in the chart of accounts. So here I've shown you the accounts that need to be set up. And just keeping in mind that you have an account name, an account type, and a detail type that needs to be entered in QBO for each of these accounts. Here are the accounts that need to be set up in QBO. Okay, so cash on hand, checking, daily sales, undeposited funds, sales tax liability, and also sales income. Now let's go over an example of how I entered one of these accounts. So your category type is bank. The name of the account is daily sales. The detail type is checking. That's all you need to enter, uh, save and close. For the daily sales method, we also need to set up some items in the products and services list. So here's the list of items that you need to have set up in your products and services. Okay, so we have cash, checks, sales, sales tax, and then Visa, MasterCard, Amex. Make sure you pick up the right sales description as well as the income account. Make sure this is very important. Here's an example of one of the items that you need to set up. So your item type is service. It'll be service for all of the items that I'm showing you. You will enter the item name. You can set up a category for daily sales. Um, I do recommend this. This way all of your items will be grouped under that category and will be easier to find. You will enter a sales description. In this case, make it the same as the name. So the name is cash. The description is cash. This is the part that I said is really important. Your income account needs to be the same account that I showed you earlier. In this case, is cash on hand. And none of these items should be marked as taxable. So make sure that this box is unchecked. And click Save and Close when you're done. Okay, so now that we have set up that chart of accounts and products and items on the products and services list, we can now enter a sales receipt. So this is the one entry that I was discussing earlier that you will enter for the sales for um, that you will enter for the day sales. First of all, you will be setting up a customer called daily sales. That will be just a one-time setup, and then you will choose daily sales as the customer. The sales receipt date is the date for which you are recording the sales. So if I'm recording today's sales, then I would use today's date. If I was recording yesterday's sales, then I would use yesterday's date. For the payment method, we need to set up a new payment method call, called daily sales. You can do it directly from here. And the deposit to account, remember that we set up that daily sales account in the chart of accounts? That's the account that I need you to use, daily sales. Now here we have a line for all of the items that we set up in the uh, products and services list. Let's go over each one. So we'll choose um, sales and we'll enter the amount of sales for that day. And I, I'm assuming that you are able to pull some sort of report from your point of sales system that would show you this. Next, we will enter sales tax and enter the amount of the sales tax for that day. Then we'll enter all of the sales that were made with uh, by receiving a credit card payment. 
So in this case, we set up Visa, MasterCard, Amex. Now one important thing here, that this will be a negative number. So um, in, in our example, we received $525. We will enter that as a negative number. Next, for every check that we receive, we will enter a separate line item. So we'll, we will choose checks as our item. Then we'll enter the check number and the name of the, the, uh, the person who wrote the check. And this is just so that we can track this later for when we do our reconciliation. Notice also that this is a negative number. So for amounts that we have received as payment, we enter them as negative. Here's another check. So we will choose check as the item, enter the check number, the name of the person who paid, and a negative number. Finally, we'll choose cash if we received cash from our customers and enter a negative number as well. The goal here is for this total to be zero. This should always be zero. If it's not zero, then something is wrong. So only when this transaction zeroes out, then you can save and close. Okay, so this next step is really important also. If you remember that when we set up the items list, we had a couple of transactions go to the undeposited funds account. So that was for checks and also for any payments that we received from our uh, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, or our merchant services. And the reason I used the undeposited funds account is because for checks, um, you might be depositing those later. You might accumulate checks for a couple of dates and then deposit them later in the week. And then for payments received from your merchant services, you don't get those for a couple of days. So we do need to use the undeposited funds account, which we have here. But that means now we have to do an extra step, an extra but necessary step. So we need to record a deposit because we need to tell QuickBooks when we receive the funds that we recorded to the undeposited funds account. And the main reason is because we want to be able to match up the amounts received to what's being shown on our bank statement. And so that when we go to the banking transactions in QBO, we'll see those amounts as a match and you'll avoid any of the problems that most people have with duplicating income. From QBO, click on the plus sign and then click bank deposit. When you open the deposit window, you're going to see something like this. So first we want to make sure that we're entering any deposits to the account um, to which the funds were deposited to usually your checking account, that we're using the date on which we received those monies. Next, we'll see here the items that we entered from our sales receipt. So here we'll see the amounts that we, re we entered for Visa, MasterCard, Amex. That's the amount that we had entered in the sales receipt. And then we'll see also the checks that we entered. And as I mentioned, you enter these separately in the sales receipt with the check number and the, uh, the name of the person who wrote the check. And then here are the amounts. Okay, so here's an example of recording a deposit for checks that we received. So let's say that we received two checks and then we are making a deposit for those two checks. Okay, so what we want to do is then check off those two checks that we're depositing. Okay, everything is entered here so we don't need to do anything, don't change anything, just check those off and make sure that the total of those checks equals to the total of the deposit that you're making at your bank. And when you're done, click Save and Close. Now here's an example of recording a deposit for funds received from your merchant service or um, Visa, MasterCard, Amex. Okay, so what you want to be doing here is that you will need to um, look on to your, um, your online banking to see when you received those monies. And then you'll enter the date for when you received the monies from your merchant account. So let's say that on February the 6th, we received the money from the merchant service. And as you know, usually it takes a couple of days for you to receive those monies. And you'll click that. Again, don't change anything here. And just again, making sure that this amount matches what you're seeing on your bank statement. So the amount and the date need to match to what you see on your bank statement or your banking activity. When you're done, click Save and Close. 
Here's the third example of recording a deposit for funds received from your merchant service minus uh, any merchant fees or other deductions that they may have taken. So that can happen sometimes when your merchant account um, deducts a service charge um, for every transaction that they make. Okay, so once again, click the box for that transaction. And notice that this is $525, but we actually received $499.50. So we need to make an extra entry. If you go here to add new deposits, and we'll make a deduction. And the received from will enter daily sales. For the account, you need to have an account set up for merchant fees expense. That's an expense account. You may already have such an account. If not, just go ahead and add it to the chart of accounts. And then you'll enter the amount of the deduction or the difference as a negative. The goal here again is for the amount to match to what your bank statement says as well as the date. When you're done, click Save and Close. And now for the final step, when you go to your banking transactions, after you've entered a sales receipt and then entered the deposits, as I've shown you, what you'll see is the transaction will match. So in the example that I showed earlier for the um, transaction that was $499.50, what we'll see is that transaction coming through from your bank account and showing a match because you already entered it in QBO. At this point, you will just click match and you're done. So just so you know, this is not duplicating what you already entered in QBO as long as it says match. Match means that you're not duplicating, you're just matching what downloaded from the bank with a transaction that's already in QBO. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and make sure that you subscribe to my channel, visit my blog at 5minutebookkeeping.com and uh, leave a comment and let me know how you're doing.